Hey all, my name is Paul Borowski and I am the owner of Quality Business Plan and what I'd like to do today is introduce y'all to the financial model that I used in writing Apple Incorporated Financial Report for 2020. So for the purpose of this video is just to give you a, a behind the scenes view of the financial report that I was able to, const uh, the financial model that I was able to construct based on Apple's income statements and balance sheets and <clears throat> other information from their 10Ks and annual reports for the last five years. So please understand first and foremost that in my Apple report, I do use portions of my financial model. I do take excerpts. I'll put it in copy and paste and then talk about that information. But included, in, what's not included in my financial report is the financial model. So just keep that in mind. And also, when I do my financial report, I may say that Apple is doing phenomenal over here. And then in another aspect of the organization, I might say that they're not doing so good. So just keep in mind, I am going to say some contrary, contradictory information because I am analyzing Apple from a perspective of a financial ratio or a line item from the income statement or a line item from the balance sheet. So keep that in mind. And then finally, I am not advocating buying, selling, or ignoring Apple's stock in the open market. I This is not the purpose of the financial analysis as to say, you know, buy it or sell it. It has nothing to do with it. The purpose of this is to give you all some insights as to what the financial information means uh, based on the financial ratios or the financial light items from my most humble of opinions. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and um, zip through this little PowerPoint presentation that I've got concocted for you and show you my little um, financial model that I've come up with. All right, so for the financial model, what I've done is I've taken in Apple's um, 10Ks for the last five years and I summarized their information into my income statement, um, into my income statement financial model from 2016 to 2018. From this information, I then went ahead and broke out each individual line item so I can go ahead and analyze it from just the perspective of that line item. And then from the popular line items, I went ahead and gave you all some um, thoughts and ideas analysis as to what that information may or may not mean from my perspective. So for example, Apple, for the revenues, they ended 2016 at $215 billion. In the next three years, the organization will grow their revenues to $265 billion. However, the company, they don't have a steady growth rate for the last five years, which is interesting. Most people don't um, realize that. In 2019, they did have a contraction to $260 billion. However, the organization bounced back and they bounced back hardcore to $274 billion in 2020. Average growth rate is about 6.4% for the last five years. You know, so from, from that information to give you all some thoughts and ideas as to what may have impacted that and, and what it means to the um, for the future. From the perspective of the balance sheet for Apple, again, went through Apple's 10Ks for the last five year, annual reports for the last five years, summarized their information into my financial model from 2016 to 2020, and then I started analyzing um, popular line items from their balance sheet. You know, an example of this would be for their cash position. Apple ended their cash position at $20.4 billion in 2016. As compared to sales, that's about 9%. In the next five years, the organization, Apple would increase their cash position to $38 billion or 13.9% of sales or 11% of the total assets, which is almost double total assets from five years previously. This tells me that the organization is really hoarding a lot of cash and that might not be the highest and best use of assets for the organization. And then I'll give you some insights into this line item from there. Next would be the financial ratios. So based on the income statement and the balance sheet for the last five years from Apple summarized, I went ahead and calculated uh, you know, what 15, 20 different financial ratios right here for the last five years. In my financial report, 
I then go ahead and break out those financial ratios and I, and I break them down for you. I'll show you for the quick ratio. I'll show you the current assets minus the um, inventory divided by the um, current liabilities, which is a formula for the quick ratio. And then I'll show you what the actual quick ratio is. And then for some of the um, financial ratios, I will then give you some thoughts and ideas as what that ratio means from the perspective of Apple. All right, so that is my little uh, financial model that is behind the scenes information of my Apple financial report. So if you all like what you're seeing, uh, please go ahead and zip on over to my website to purchase a financial report. And you can do that by going to qualitybusinessplan.com forward slash Apple company analysis. And on this website, it'll just show you Apple Incorporated Financial Statements and Financial Ratios Analyzed from 2016 to 2020. Scroll down a little bit further and you are able to buy my Apple Financial Report. Um, and hopefully you all will be able to uh, you'll be able to download it and it's in the PDF. And hopefully you all will be able to gain some better insights, whether it be for your class or for your investing. Um, in whether, you know, this is a um, suitable investment for yourself or not. All right. So hopefully this information was helpful. And as always, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up on YouTube. And as always, have a fantastic day. Thank you.